We use Active Data Guard in order to offload reporting from our primary server. Excellent choice, very common use for it. We increase the under retention parameter on the standby node, but we're still getting the occasional ORA 155 snapshot too old error. Can you explain what is going on? There are two very important considerations here when it comes to understanding undo on a Active Data Guard or standby database. So the first one I will talk about now is undo retention on the primary. You're probably familiar with the fact that when you set undo retention on the primary, you choose effectively how long the database will endeavor to hold on to undo such that queries of at least that length should be able to complete without getting a snapshot too old. The default is 900 seconds or 15 minutes, but let's assume I've set that on this same database. The first thing we need to understand in terms of considerations is that really doesn't apply anymore. Now that sounds a bit strange. That's why I put this tilde or an approximation next there. We worked out in Nights Oracle that if some undo got older than 15 minutes old, then why would we go to the effort of throwing it away? Because that takes resources to clean that stuff up. And if our undo table space is not running out of space, then why bother? What we actually do is we simply hang on to undo until such point as we are forcibly have to remove it, i.e. we need some space in our undo table space. So the way to see what your real undo retention is, if you look at a undo stat, which measures this over time, you get effectively sort of intervals of time, I think it's 10 minutes, then you see this column called the tuned undo retention. And what that is, is the genuine retention you are getting, which is typically going to be a lot more than your parameter of undo retention. Obviously, if your undo table space is tiny, then your tuned undo retention might not even be as high as the undo retention that's been set in the init.ora file. But effectively, this is a way of knowing what your genuine undo retention is. So what's actually going on here is at nine o'clock, some undo might be created and that goes into the undo segment. And then there'll be more on, as time goes on, there'll be undo information for changes that were done at 9.05, 9.09, 9.15, etc. And so we've hit the limit of our undo retention now. That's that little dotted line there you see in the diagram. Effectively, we say, okay, that's 15 minutes worth of undo. The next undo information I need, in theory, I could throw away that nine o'clock stuff because the time is now advanced past 9.15. But as I said, we don't do that. We simply say, well, there's, there's space left in our undo table space. Why would we bother going to the effort of throwing away stuff that's still there? So 9.17 comes along and guess what? We've now got 17 minutes of undo retention effectively, even though our parameter is set to 15 because we've got space left in our undo table space and then 22 and 28, etc. Now, as the clock moves forward and people keep making changes, we're going to hit 9.30 or 9.32, and now our undo table space is near full. Therefore, at that point, we finally go back and throw away that stuff from 9 o'clock, and the next piece of undo goes in there at 9.32. So on our primary, this is an example of if I set my under retention to 15 minutes, in this particular scenario, I'm going to get about 30 minutes of under retention because it makes no sense to artificially limit the people running their reports. All of this is undo information, and anything which changes blocks, including undo blocks in the database, needs to be logged to redo. Head back to 9 o'clock, that 9 o'clock change that went to both the database and the undo segment, so we could roll back that change, all gets written to the redo, as does the 9.05, the 9.09, 15, 17, 22, etc. As a result, this is how your standby database stays up to date. The only thing the standby database gets from you in normal operation is redo. So all these changes to your database and the undo associated with them all goes to redo and all that redo gets sent to the standby. So if we now include a standby database in here and we repeat that same exercise, we have a change at 9.05 that gets written to redo and it immediately gets sent to the redo on the standby side and gets applied to our standby. And so the two are in sync. Uh, the way that works is we have a thing called standby redo logs. So as information gets logged to the primary reader logs, that gets transferred in near real time over to the standby reader logs. And from there, those changes then get applied to the genuine segments on your standby database, whether they're the data blocks or the undo blocks, et cetera. And that way, the standby rolls forward in the same way that your primary is rolling forward. And therefore, the next change goes into primary, that goes to your standby, next change, standby, and so on and so on. Do I keep on doing? Yep. That's effectively how your standby stays up to date in the sense that your standby redo logs effectively re receive information from your primary redo logs and those standby redo log changes then apply changes to your standby database.
So what that means is, as we saw here, I'm once again assuming that effectively we have a change here that we started at nine o'clock and we rolled all the way through to 9.32 and we therefore had to throw away some nine o'clock stuff. When we do that, the same thing happens at our standby site. As a result, the under retention on your, or the undue duration on your standby is pretty much exactly the same as the undo on your primary. If you started throwing away segments faster on your primary, then the standby immediately reflects that. So it doesn't matter what you do with your under retention parameter on the standby, because it actually plays, plays no bearing here. It all depends on how much undo and how long it's being held onto on the primary. So your first consideration is you shouldn't need to worry about setting the under retention on your standby because it won't do anything for you. All that really matters is setting the undo at the primary, how big your undo table space is and your under retention parameter. And if you want to do guarantee, no guarantee, et cetera, at the table space level. But all these things need to be done at the primary because they will be reflected in the standby. That's the first consideration is that real time apply is the default. When you create a standby database in any modern version of the Oracle, when you go through the list of commands, or if you're on 19C or it might be 21C, you can actually just run a one line command now, which is you know, prepare a node for standby and off it goes. Then what happens is the standby reader logs will be created as part of that process. But standby reader logs are a relatively new invention. Now, new I'm putting in quotes here. When I say new, we're talking 11G. So we're talking over a decade ago. But it is a reality, and it was the case for this customer, that some people have had data guards since you know, version 7. And as a result, they've simply incrementally upgraded their databases from 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way through to 19 now, hopefully. And at no point did they actually have to or forced, uh, forcibly do add these standby reader logs. What used to happen with data guard is when you filled up a reader log on the primary, then we would ship it over to the standby and apply it then. And as you know, Oracle is very keen on keeping backward compatibility. So just because you upgraded to 11, we're not going to simply say, I'm sorry, your data guard node is broken because you didn't add standby reader logs. We put a message in the alert log saying it's a good idea to have them, but we don't force you to have them. And that's what actually happened for this customer. Because they'd upgraded from a very early version of data guard and they'd never had standby reader logs and we enforce our backward compatibility to support them, they, even on 19C, they didn't, didn't have standby reader logs. So what means is this happens. You have all this information going into reader logs, all this undue information going into reader logs on your primary, but none of it's making over to the standby. The standby is sitting there effectively frozen in time, waiting for an entire reader log to fill. So here's a whole stack of undo changes going along, but nothing gets applied to the standby until that reader log fills up. And even so, even though our undo has wrapped around, we've had to throw away some old undo and now replace it with the stuff from 9.32. Even though we've done that, the standby is blissfully unaware of that. But eventually the reader log will fill up and it all suddenly gets sent in one blob to the standby and gets applied en masse, just using database recovery. That has very strong implications, not just for the up-to-dateness of your standby. And originally standby reader logs are all about keeping your standby more accurately up to date. Because if it's only up to date when you do a reader log switch, then obviously there's a chance of losing data if you had a catastrophe. It's really what the standby reader logs are really about that. But they have an unforeseen side effect when it comes to active data guard. Because if we look at the primary, at 9.05 in the morning, then the SCN number, the system change number in the database reflects 9.05 in the morning. That obviously makes sense. So it, you know, the system change number rolls forward with time. You make a change at 9.28, the SCN might be 928. It'll be some other number, but we're keeping the maths simple here. And at 9.32, when we actually filled up our undo table space, well, we have an SCN of 9.32 that needs to be saved somewhere. And therefore we threw away, as we saw before, the oldest SCN piece of undo, which was in 9.05. What that means is, is that for a 27 minute period, the undo information for SCN 905 was floating around in our undo table space. So for that entire 27 minutes, I could run a query that may have started at 905 in the morning. It could still be running for 27 minutes and it's gonna work fine because I've got that SCN data floating around in my undo table space. Once I got to 932, if I had a query that was still running from 905, then I'd probably be in trouble because I might not be able to find information from 905. But because I don't have standby reader logs, all of that gets sent in one 
blob over to the standby. So the standby effectively will reflect the same thing. It will be 905, the SCN is at 905. But at 928 on my standby database, it still is 905 because I haven't applied that radio log yet. So at 28 minutes past nine, it still looks like the database was at 905. And then at 932, when the reader log switched, or just after we erased 905, when the reader log switched, the, data, the primary says, yep, ship that whole reader over to the standby and apply it. What that means is all queries that were running with an SCN of 905 on your standby, they're fine. But if you started a query at, say, did I put it in? Yeah. If I started a query at 931.55 on my standby, so it's only been running for five seconds. At the moment that query started, the SCN on my standby database is 905 still because nothing has come over since then. So every query says, okay, I'm reading the database as it was at SCN 905 in the morning, even though I'm starting at 931.55. Five seconds later, all that redo is going to come flying across and it's going to be applied in maybe just three or four seconds. And literally in that three or four seconds, your SCN on your standby goes from 905 to 932 because we simply erased 905. So that query that actually started only five seconds ago is going to get an ORA 1555, even though it's only been running for five seconds. Because from the time it started, the standby database says I'm at SCN 905. And then literally within five seconds, the standby database no longer has an idea what SCN 905 is. It's been thrown away by the application of that redo. So our considerations are number one is all your under retention. Everything that in terms of how long you think you can run a query for is driven by the primary. So if the longest query in your primary runs for 10 minutes, but you have queries on your active data guard on your standby that run for 30 minutes, you need to set your under retention to a 30 minute period on the primary, because that's the only way that information gets reflected on the standby. And the second thing is, if you don't have standby ready logs, then no matter how much undo you have, you run that risk of very short duration queries being smashed with ORA 1555s because the SCN they were looking at can simply vanish under their feet. So standby reader logs are critical for real-time apply, but they're also critical for making sure that the queries you want to run on Active Data Guard are actually going to have a decent chance of success. So under retention on the primary, standby reader logs for all sorts of benefits on your standby database.